Kia ora, my name's David Kinane, and in this latest tutorial from Sharp Kinane Limited, we're going to show you how to set up your MBOT and create your first simple program. So let's get straight into it. First, we're going to have a look at the different parts of the robot. Here is the onboard button, and this is how you can activate your programs, or one of the options. We'll look into that in a moment. The next element on the front of the robot here is the ultrasonic sensor, which measures distances between solid objects and the robot. And finally, on the bottom, we have the line following sensor. Looking from the top, we can see that we've got four ports. Ports two and three have already been occupied by the line following sensor and the ultrasonic sensor, leaving us with two more ports to play with. On the left hand side we have two further ports controlling the left and right hand motor. And finally from this top view you can see the black input port for the 6 volt supply from the batteries. On the left hand side of the robot here is the on off power switch. On the right hand side of the robot is the all important USB communication port which is what we will be using to download our programs from the computer to the MBOT. You can do it via Bluetooth and you can do it via Wi-Fi and we'll show how to do that in subsequent tutorials. Now it's time for me to start doing some programming in the MBlock software and then transfer that software uh, code from the computer to the robot. And depending on your computer setup, you've got two variations you can do with this. If you're working on a PC or on a Mac, the simplest way is for you to download the latest version of MBlock from the Make Code or Make Block website and download for Windows or PC, and that's entirely up to you. If you're working on a Chromebook, the website recommends you actually download a little program called MLink. Uh, and it looks like this. So you come down the MLink software and you would download it onto your Chromebook. And once that um, Chromebook uh, M-Link software has been installed, you the first thing you say you have to do, it says, is to then um, run that program and then go to the um, online version of the software at um, ide.mblock.cc. And this is what the online version of the website looks like, of the, of the coding environment looks like, and it works best in Chrome. They recommend you use it in Chrome. But we're, I'm, the rest of this tutorial is going to be showing you what it looks like on my computer running on a Mac. Um, and the transferring of files and coding is what we're going to focus on for the rest of this tutorial. This is the MakeBlock, MBlock coding environment when it runs um, directly from your computer. And for those of you that have used Scratch before, you'll recognize the interface looks pretty similar. It's based on Scratch 3. Um, the stage is on, the on a different side. The coding area is much bigger on the, on the right-hand side. So let's just run our way through this. If we start in the top left-hand corner, it's the stage with the sprites on. Obviously, when you're coding a robot, we won't anything, nothing will be happening on the stage there. Um, but you can use this program to do scratch type based projects. Um, in the middle are all the blocks. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of blocks here related to the CyberPy sprite or device that you can see on the tabs here. So the only difference between Scratch 3 and um, Make Block, M Block environment is you've got three tabs here instead of two. You've got a background, sprites, and devices tab. We're going to be focusing on the devices tab. And over here on the right hand side is the code area. And a point of note here is that you can switch between blocks and Python. We're not going to look at Python today, but you, if you're interested in looking at Python, you can switch between the two environments. We're going to stick with blocks. So that's the raw environment. Now we need to set it up so that our M bot can actually be coded and spoken to from this environment. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the CyberPy icon here and delete it. Just get rid of this asks me if I want to delete it. I do. And now I want to add the device that I actually want. So I'm going to click on the add button here. And you've got this device library comes up and there's a whole bunch of things here you can look for. But we are looking for one thing only and we're looking for the MBOT. We're going to click on that and click on OK. And you can see now that the um, blocks down here have changed from the Python blocks and we can see we've got LED port panels um, we've got 
um, other options down here, actions and sensing, etc., etc. So we've got the ultrasonic sensor. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to connect our computer to our robot and test and make sure that that uh, link is established. And that's what we'll look at next. So the key area for us to focus on on the devices tab here is this area that sits um, to the right hand side of that space. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that everything is connected up. So I'm going to using my USB cable, I'm going to connect my USB cable, B cable to my computer and then to the other end to my um, the right hand side of the MBOT. I then need to switch my MBOT on to make sure that it, it is now going to be able to receive messages from the computer. And the next thing I need to do is to click on the connect button down the bottom here. So I'm going to click on connect. And it comes up with this USB serial port. Um, and just, just, just accept that. If you are not sure, there might be some more options down here. There isn't in my case. I'm going to click on connect and the green confirmation sign up here and the beep if you've just heard that tells me that my computer and my MBOT are now connected. Now the interface here changes and we've got two options here. We've got live and upload. Live allows us to just do some software checking to make sure that the communication works and we can do a little bit of coding. But the live requires the USB cable to be tethered to the to the computer and to the robot at the same time. The coding is going to be delivered in real time live, which means if you have the motors turning, it's not not going to get very far before it runs out of USB. In which case, you'll need to switch to the upload option. But let's now just create a simple and basic pro program to check and make sure that our communication is actually working. So just like we do in uh, events block, sorry, just like we do when we're working with Scratch, we've got the hat blocks, the starting blocks, and you'll notice that some of them are, are, block, are grayed out. And they, they, this will switch. When you switch to the upload version, some of these will turn off as well. So for this particular example, we're going to click on the when board button is pressed. And we're simply just going to have a look at how this works. We're going to click on the show function here. I'm going to drag uh, an LED out. And I'm going to use uh, a control block, I think. Yes, wait. I'm going to wait for a couple of seconds or wait for, yeah, we'll wait for two seconds. Wait for two seconds and I will set all the LEDs to turn on to a particular color. Let's make it kind of a, a lightish green. That will do. And make that come on for two seconds. And that will now automatically transfer to the uh, MBOT robot. Um, and let's have a look at what that looks like as a, a video. So we'll just keep this LED one to one side here. We'll um, let's do this, make this one second. Let's use a repeat block and let's duplicate this. And we need to switch this to left and switch this one to right, change the colors. Let's make that one red and let's make this one blue and let's change these to half a second. And so now the, we should see these LED lights flick from left to right for half a second in a cycle of 10 repeats uh, uh, and the program will wait for one second before it executes after I've pressed the button. We can keep building on this program and start using some of the sensing functions, but all the while this um, program is limited by its re requirement because it's live for the robot to be static and for it to be tethered by the length of the, um, the USB cable. So obviously we can't use things like motors. But let's just have a look at what some of these um, other functions can be. So let's build this new program now. I'm going to delete this. Wait one second again. I'll put this on a, no, take that one off. I'll put, put a forever block on um, and we'll put an if and else in there. And we will use a sensing block. So we'll use the uh, LED colors. No, let's just change this to this one here. Shows color and shows color. 
these two here. We want it to be red for there, green for this. So we'll just drag this across to here. There we go. So this is going to measure length. What we're going to do now, we're going to use an operator. We want a less than and we want a sensing. So we want the ultrasonic sensor distance in centimeters. It says here, if the ultrasonic sensor distance in centimeters is less than, let's say, five, turn the LEDs red. Otherwise, the LEDs should be on uh, green the whole time. So it's like a warning of distance. Let's have a see if this works. Now we need to switch from live to upload. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to click on the, I'm going to switch this over here to, uplo to upload. And you, as soon as I switch to upload, can you see how the hat block for the onboard button has now changed? So we need to change our code. So this now means I can actually use the motor blocks. So let's actually take the opportunity here to change all of our code. And now I want to use the, when the, um, mbot m core starts up and this is when the control weight block is really good because that means when you switch the power the on button the on off switch you don't you don't want the computer or the robot to start moving straight away so let's get it to wait two seconds that means that once i press the on off switch i can move away from the robot and it can start moving i'm just make, i'm going to make a very simple um, action i'm going to um let's get here Let's just simply do something as simple as move forward at power 50% for one second. Let's make it move slower than that. Let's make it move at quarter power for two seconds. And then let's make it wait again. Stop. And then we will make it reverse. Move backward at power 25% for two seconds. It's just simply so we can see it move backwards and forwards. And so now we've got our video blocks created. We now need to upload it. And this is this is where the difference are. We, it, it, it's not going to transfer automatically until we press the upload button over here. I'm going to click the upload button. And now that I've uploaded it, I can disconnect my USB cable from my robot and when I'm ready I can place the robot on the floor or, where, or whatever the location is that I want the robot to do the work that I've asked it to do and I will switch the power button on and the robot will move. Thank you for watching this latest Sharp Kinane video tutorial. Until the next one, Kakitiano.